Hi guys, welcome to this fourth model building lecture where we are going to take our model from an open loop system to a closed loop system by adding a PID feedback controller. So you don't really need to know the ins and outs of PID control to understand what we are going to do next. However, I would advise to learn about it just to make the most of this course and to really understand how changing the gains of our PID really can impact our model and so on. A good way to do this would be to go from my course uh, control systems from mathematical modeling to PID control and it will really teach you the mathematics, the methods and the theory behind control systems and PID control. So how are we going to put a PID control loop in this model right here? So first of all, let's think about what a PID does. A PID takes an error, which is the difference between your reference input or the value you want your system to reach minus the actual performance, the actual output of your system. So this is the error of your system. This error is fed into your PID and the PID outputs a value which acts on the actuator of your system. Here, our input voltage right here to keep the output of your system at the reference input and it does this by making sure that the error you are feeding to the PID stays at zero. So what are we going to do? First we are going to get rid of this input voltage right there. We don't need that anymore because we're going to let the PID do what it wants with its value to reach the velocity that we ask him to reach. Okay? So First things first, let's add a PID block in our model. What's very interesting is that, again, Simulink makes this so easy because you don't actually need to create your PID block yourself. There's a PID block already available with lots of really cool functionalities that we'll go through now. Let's see uh, how this works. So we take the PID controller, drag it to the work environment. Let's take it here. Let's connect straight away its output to our sum, so it's going to represent the voltage input. The great thing with PIDs is you don't actually need to tell the PID that you are working on a voltage. Okay? By looking at the error and with respect to the gains you gave it, it's actually going to react to your error to bring that error to zero. Therefore, it does not matter um, what you're trying to act on or change. Okay, it, it just depends of you, on your error you're fitting in. The bigger the error, the bigger the re response of your controller, the smaller the error, the smaller the response of your controller. So, we want to feed an error to our system. Okay, as I said earlier, I like to work with kilometers per hour. Also, it will allow us to see really what's happening with this value here. So let's first have an input value. We're going to take a constant again as an input up. And this is going to be our reference input. So the velocity we actually want the system to reach. Okay. okay I need to make this a bit smaller. There you go. Up. I have a bit more space like this. So this is going to be our ref input. And I want it to be, let's say, 65 kilometers per hour okay so let's take our gain here copy control it put it after our block and we want our gain to convert this 65 kilometers per hour or whatever value we put in but always in kilometers per hour to meters per second because it is the, the, the units the dimensions that are used for the output of our system so in this case we actually need to divide the kilometers per hour by 3.6 to get 2 meters per second. So what you do here is you essentially use the inverse of 3.6 which is 1 over 3.6 and the gain block is going to multiply the input by 1 over 3.6 which is the same as dividing the input by 3.6. So we OK, apply this. Now we need the error. So let's copy right here this sum block. We're going to put it here input our meters per second reference velocity and we're going to subtract from this the actual output of our system to see um, how close is the output of our system 
to our reference input. And this is the same as the error. So this block here outputs the error that we can feed straight away to our PID controller. Oh, did so far. Okay, there you go. There you go, guys. We've just closed our system. This is now a closed loop system that has a reference input, which is then computed. Um, we make the error between the reference input by looking at the output of the system and comparing the two. This error is fed into our PID controller, which works out a value, in this case, a voltage to input in our system. And then it's as before, this voltage, from this voltage, we subtract the back EMF of the motor, which is, which um, we then have this transfer function that computes our output torque from this input voltage. We saturate this torque to make sure we get realistic results. We have then our MATLAB function block that calculates the acceleration of our car from the torque and the velocity. This gives us a an acceleration. We integrate this acceleration to get the velocity, which is then feedback everywhere it needs to in our system. So the MATLAB function, the actual uh, input voltage for the back EMF and in the PID controller to make to find out the error. Thank you very much for listening, guys. We're going to stop it here. So again, it makes it easier for you to find the right lectures in the course. Um, in the next lecture, we are actually going to look into the PID controller, play with its with his values, see how this impacts our system and its performance. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask me. I'm always very happy to help. Thank you, guys.